Right, restart ladies. So this is a really, really important one. Um, really important lesson, I think, in the whole thing, because as you know, if you work with me, I don't believe in good versus bad food. So first of all, I'm going to explain the three foods that I would suggest you never, ever eat. And number two, I'm going to explain this lovely graph that you can see and how it how you can um, really enjoy nutrition rather than feeling like a slave to it. Because I firmly believe that a lot of the ladies who come to me, come to me because they want freedom from diets, they want freedom from having to just always eat, you know, lettuce leaves in terms of their food, right? And food is social, F food is emotional. Um, and we all want to have stuff that tastes nice and that suits our palate, suits our lifestyle. Okay, so first of all, as I said, let's break down the three foods that I think you shouldn't eat. Okay, so number one, there will always be foods that some people have what we call either an allergy or an intolerance to. Now, if I talk about uh, gluten, for example, um, that's a big one and there's some interesting research which I might share with you another time about whether you have to be celiac or gluten intolerant to actually still get an impact from it. However, for most people, if you have a food like uh, lactose, so from milk is a really big one, um, nightshades is also potentially another one. So nightshade uh, uh, potatoes, for example, are actually a nightshade vegetable. Then eat those. If you feel symptoms and you feel like foggy headed, stomach issues, bloating, etc., take them out. Swipe them out. OK, that would be my number one thing for those. Number two, okay, look out for the things that are what you call your trigger foods. So, for example, I know that my biggest trigger food is wine gums. So guess what I do? I keep wine gums out of my house unless, and I'll show you why, I calorie bank, and I'll show you what that means in a minute, okay? Number three, foods that you absolutely hate. Now, here's the thing. If you're watching this, you now know that you need to eat more vegetables. We all know this, etc. What I would suggest is that you implement maybe a couple of new vegetables a week, try them, see how you feel on them. Like, I'll be honest with you, once upon a time, I wouldn't eat Chinese because of all the vegetables in them. Now, love Chinese, love vegetables. So don't rule things out because you hate it, because you haven't tried it since you were like five years old. What you need to do is try it, see if you like it. But if it's something that you really, really hate and it almost makes you gag, like kale, then don't eat it. Seriously, you can get nutrients from other things, um, not from that one thing exclusively, okay? So without further ado, I want to talk you through this amazing way to eat foods you love, eat, a, eat out, have a takeaway, and still get awesome results, okay? So I'm going to talk you through in detail the calorie banking, and then in the sheet below, there's also going to be a nice little snack guide for you, which I've put together for you, all right? So... Let's dive in. So here we've got someone who, let's just say they average, their average calories that they need is 1,500, right? Now, here's how we would plot the week based on our social lives, right? So let's be honest. Um, actually, this person is 1,600. Um, so let's, let's break it down. Monday through till Thursday, most people are really, you know, nutrition is pretty good. You're regimented by work and all of that stuff, right? Easy. You've got structure. Awesome. Planned. Often, though, Friday is a few drinks for the girls or a few drinks after work or a chill out, oh, relax from work. So what you want to do then is factor in a few more calories into that day. Now, let's be honest. Saturday is the day when it all goes tits up, for want of a better word. So what you want to do is go higher calories on Saturday. Then we know on Sunday, let's just say you're going to go around for a roast at the mums or whatever, then you bring the calories down a little bit more. But what we've done by then is we've made the person hit their 1,600 calories, all because we did what we call calorie banking. So what we did at the beginning of this was Monday to Thursday, we had about 1,400 calories, maybe 1,300 calories on a couple of days, okay? And then what we did then was then ramped up, so we had extra calories here at the weekend, we had a social event, you likely to eat more, 
etc etc and then what we did yeah we started back in a little bit so that by the end of the week we'd hit the average calories that we needed to make sure that person hit their calorie goals okay so how does this apply to you this is the lesson for the week okay so look at your week ahead work out when you're likely to eat high calorie foods I would imagine it's going to be Saturday and, and Friday, probably the biggest ones. And then during this week, Monday to Thursday, just plan out the meals and be a bit more strict with your portion sizes, really dial those portion sizes in. Then come Saturday, here's another little tactic for you. Okay, So what you're going to do is you're going to have a bit of a, a fast on Friday and Saturday. Okay, And what that means is you've then got some calories left to play with. And this is when you can drop in a few treats. I hate the word treats, but it's a language that you all know and understand. So what we're going to do is drop in a few treats here, have big calorie meals, like you're going to eat out, take away, etc. Okay, but then that leaves you with a nice Sunday where you can have some extra calories in your diet and still hit you 1006. So what you're going to do, plan out your week ahead for the week. Work out where you're going to have maybe socials, have people over, etc. And then you're going to plot how your meals are going to go based on um, your new calories, your kind of that calorie banking system. You don't necessarily have to work out the calories. The methodology is the same. The methodology is smaller portions on the Monday to Thursday, bigger portions, um, maybe some intermittent fasting and maybe a drink or two and some treats on a Friday and Saturday averaging out your week so that way you can definitely have all the food you love and still get awesome results and then if you go to the slide below you're going to have some treats that you can fit into your calories that are very low calorie all right so any questions let me know comment in the group tag me in the question and i'll happily answer it have an awesome week go smash it